Hello everyone and welcome to this video song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today we're going to be taking a look at the Dell Inspiron 6000. Now some of you will remember that um, I bought this, um, I think it was the back end of 2014. Originally this machine came in quite good condition but it did have um, very low specs. I mean, it had a, a Celeron, I think it was a Celeron M, um, clocked at, I think, 1.4 gigahertz. Um, a 40 gigabyte hard drive, I do believe. Or it could have, or it could have came with a hard drive that's in it, actually, I think it might have done. Um, but it also only had 256 megabytes of RAM and Windows XP Home Edition. Now, as some of you will know, since then, I upgraded for the memory from the, the mere 256 megs that it had to 2 gigabytes. I upgraded the CPU from its lowly seller on 1.4 to a Pentium M1.86 gigahertz. Nice. And I also upgraded... Um, I actually, um, <laughs> this is going to sound stupid, but I actually bought another Windows XP Media Center Edition um, CD key. I actually bought a... I actually bought a replacement memory cover memory compartment cover. See, there was nothing wrong with the old one, except for it had a COA for Windows XP Home Edition. What I really wanted was Windows XP Media Center Edition. So I bought a memory door cover with a Windows Media Center Edition COA on it. So now it actually has its own license for Media Center. <laughs> so I guess what you could say is I've completely changed this machine's modus operandi from large screened budget bash mooper to uh, to the computing equivalent of a mid 2000s barnstormer anyway not not that you really uh, take these things out on the autobahns unless you're actually in a car i mean i would i would not recommend driving a, a pentium m laptop of any sort down the autobahns Mostly because it doesn't self-repel. Um, you can probably drive a Dell PowerEdge server down the auto barns with the fans. But anyway, I digress. Um, so, today, what we're actually going to do is we're going to upgrade the hard drive. Now, at the moment, it's got a 60 gig drive in it. I've uh, got an 80 gig drive. Um, you know, I may as well you know, give it that bit more space because, you know, why not? Um try to make a machine that um, I'm trying to make the best possible Pentium M machine that's possible to make well kind of I mean probably not going to go with the ACI graphics because well I'll end up with a silver and white coloured puddle of gooey mess from where it melts um, I, I don't want that um, so anyway Let's get straight to it then, in uh, installing the new hard drive. So, first off, what we want to do is um, we want to lose power to the laptop. Take away all of its power, just like the UK government does to its uh, citizens every day. Next thing we want to do is remove the hard disk caddy. Now this is normally locked in by a couple of screws, but on this machine they're missing um, for whatever reason. Um, so it's literally just a case of put, you know, hooking my fingers behind this lip and then just pull. And there we go. And here is the drive. It's a um, it's actually Hitachi Travel Star. Nice. 
what I need to do now is unscrew the hard disk from the caddy. Now this bit is screwed in. So now this bit, some of you may recognise as a hard disk adapter. Well, the adapter that actually lets you plug it into the Dell. And this has been with us since the um, since the Dell Latitude uh, CSX, probably the CX as well. Uh, CS as well. I'm not entirely sure, but. Uh, Here we go, that's set that's that unplugged. We've just got some regular IDE pins. So I'm just gonna, just gonna drop that drive over there. That'll uh, come in handy for a project of some sort. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, just um, push this back in. Uh, I will give it some of its powers back. Right. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we'll plug the machine in. I'm just going to plug in the Ethernet cable as well. Nice. Okay. Now, something else that I have, and I'm so glad the optical drive is on the left side of this machine, is an actual Dell OEM Media Center CD. Now, next thing to do, scroll down to Device Info. Um, yep, we now see 80 gigabyte hard disk drive and CDRW-DVD combo. Like I said, yep, brilliant. Okay, hard drive is installed. It's recognised. Good. So that's Windows started up. Um, I want to set up Windows. Right, now this disk had, well, a failed, a failed dual boot by the looks of things. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to delete that, I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to delete that. So now I've got, uh, now I've got 74 gigs of unpartitioned space. So what I'm going to do is format using the NTFS file system. I'll do a full format. This is going to take a, quite a while to fully format. So I'm going to enjoy this cup of tea and I will join you for the gooey portion of setup. So quite a while later, here we are at the gooey portion of setup. So I think by now you'll know the drill. For me at least, set this to the United, uh, United Kingdom system locale. Apply, delete the US keyboard where, apply, good. Don't need it. I don't need it. Definitely don't need it. Right, put my name in. And now I need to name this machine. Um, something like, might do the trick. Now for an admin password. Now, one thing that you might notice on here is this says Windows XP Professional Setup. And you might have noticed it in the text mode portion of setup as well. There's a good reason for this. Windows XP Media Center is actually built on top of um, Windows XP Professional. Now, they do say that support for um, some of the advanced domain controller settings or what have you have been removed but I know that in Windows XP Media Center um, I'm still able to uh, fiddle about with NTLM uh, authentication I know this because I actually had I actually did have to fiddle about with it um, when setting up Outlook for access to my university email account while I was studying at Hull. Of course, at the time, I had Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005 installed on my main computer. Now, what I'm going to do is just set the uh, time zone. Okay, 
So now <clears throat> we're at this point. What I'm going to need to do is um, I'll let it ch change the screen resolution. Nice. And while it doesn't change it that much, it changes it just enough so the out of the box experience actually goes. Okay, so I'm at the uh, out of the box experience. What I'm going to do now is, um, yep, uh, turn on Windows Update. Yep, I'll do that now. Good. And yep, type my name in. I wonder if I've, uh, yeah, I was busy actually doing other things on this system, so I wonder if I've actually missed the, um, the, uh, special Dell installation steps. Maybe not. Probably not actually, considering how long it's taking. Although that could be it, just setting up my profile. When Windows, when you install Windows, the first time you set it up, it usually does take quite a while. Oh, here we go. Um, installing applications, please wait up to 30 minutes for the in, um, while the installation is in progress. So basically, I'll be on this screen for um, quite some time. So, I will be back once this is done. So today is the next day, and we're actually in Windows XP Media Center Edition at the desktop now. So, what I'm going to do now is install, well first off, I want to install the chipset driver. Once that's installed, <clears throat> I'll be able to install everything else. You know, it's, it is best to install the chipset drivers before installing anything. The next thing I would like to install is probably the video driver. Um, like I said, this has the Intel graphics video driver. So now we have the video driver, and that means everything has became a wee bit beshrunken. I'm going to... Make my mouse pointer a wee bit larger. There we go. So what I will do is I'll install the rest of these drivers. And I'm sure you don't actually need to see me doing this. But, um, you know, once they're installed, I will, um, I will be right back. And we'll set this machine up for use on the network. So, now all the drivers are installed. And now we can start mapping network drives. So I'll do that. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and map the rest of them. And there is all my network um, stuff, network resources. Now, um, before I do anything else, I want to install Windows XP Service Pack. Four. I think I'm also going to install Zoom Text as well. Like I said, this isn't an unofficial. This is an unofficial service pack. So, yeah, you know, this is not fully supported by Microsoft in any kind of way, shape, or form. <laughs> However, it does allow you to get the Windows Embedded POS Ready updates and just kind of generally keep Windows XP running tickety-boo. So what I will do is I will let this actually go ahead and install itself and I'll be right back. I don't know um, how long this is going to take. 
But um, as you can see, it actually installs like any other Windows XP service pack. Set rep Windows XP service pack for unofficial service pack for is now installed, and it's given us um, a lot of updates, and it's also given us Internet Explorer 8, which is the last supported version of Internet Explorer for Windows XP. Now, still a couple things I will need to install. CD burning software, DVD, uh, DVD decoder, um, <coughs> you know, kind of things like that. But, um, yeah, I think, um, for now, I think uh, this is done. I mean, uh, the machine is all up and running. Thank you all for watching this video, and please, do feel free to join me for my next one. Goodbye. bye.